Well, hello, I am Maria and I am the admin of Money Making Esthetician. <coughs> Excuse me. And today we're joined with Taylor and I am so excited for this live because I have been anticipating it for years. I like literally, this was one of my goals to have a wax, a live waxing demo in the group. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this for us. Of course. I'm not muted, right? You guys can hear me? Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm Taylor, the brand educator at Starpill. And I'm here with Ari, of course, if you've ever attended any of our webinars or really any of our lives. Ari is our social media manager and Carlos, the man behind the camera, who is going to help with everything. And our beautiful model, who is getting her lower legs and underarms done. Hello, everyone. My name is Ari. <laughs> I'm the community manager here at Starpill. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and I will be the one reading those questions to Taylor for her to answer um, live here with you guys. And I love all the questions. So please hit me with all the any questions, questions you have. <laughs> okay, there we go. So Taylor's going to start today uh, with a lower leg wax with yep. the vegan formula, which she will tell you more about. You ready? Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> so um, first, obviously, I'm going to prep Janelle's skin. So this is the pre-wax gel. It is tea tree based. So it's hydrating and antiseptic. And then I, I like to have everything set up at once just so I don't have to keep touching stuff. So then the next step would be the lotion, a little bit of the oil. And I like to always keep a clean, dry cotton round just in case I need to remove any sweat or any excess products. Got my sticks. And then this is vegan. Vegan is my favorite formula. If you guys do not know, it is one of our specialty formulas and it is a gel consistency formula. Um, this formula has the lowest working temperature of our entire Starpill catalog, super pliable, super flexible, um, no animal byproducts, obviously, because it's vegan. But if you are a speed waxer and looking for something that won't break when you're applying large strips, vegan is the go-to formula. Are you ready, my dear? Let's do it. All right. So now I'm just going to prep her skin. She's not super hairy. She thinks she is, but she is not. But that's okay. And then now I'm going to take that clean, dry cotton round and remove any excess products. Background on me, I've been licensed for six years. Um, I got my start at European Wax Center like a lot of other waxers. Um, I opened my personal studio in 2019 and then went full-time in 2020. And I started working with Starpill in 2021. Any questions so far before I get started? All right. Does anyone have any questions? You can drop so, them in the chat. Like I said, vegan is one of our gel consistency formulas. So I like to start in the calf like that look how pretty that is so with star pill we do not use powder um if you are currently using star pill and having issues and you are using powder that could be part of the problem so see i have lots of pressure i got an even even edge right here a nice lip at the bottom i didn't apply right right there but that is okay see so what happens when you don't apply it with enough pressure. So because it's hard wax, I can just go through and correct that strip. It's real messy right now, don't judge me guys. But that's also the beautiful thing with hard wax, you can always correct a strip. You ready Carlos? I'm like, I have a so, question. I'm asking him if he's ready. I'm such a habit of Carlos like taking content of me and having to like, you know, do my hands and all that stuff. I don't have to do that because we're live. Don't laugh at me, Janelle. <laughs> do you want Any to questions? the temperature of the wax? Okay. So like at what temperature do we have to have it? What's kind of the consistency? So Janelle, what are you using for products at home? The products at home are always going to determine 
or help determine um, your wax results, but also how the service is going to go as well. Ari used to always be my bond, my model, and didn't use the best quality stuff. I did not. So <laughs> waxing her would be an experience. So if you are having that problem with clients with the wax breaking, um, or if they're super uncomfortable, their skin is super dry, ask them what they are using. So what are you using, my dear? Oh, okay. She did not have that reaction when I told her about my <laughs> soap. <laughs> and then I used my own today. So. Okay. So can you see the hair on there? No, not really. How was that? How does that feel? See? Super pliable, super flexible. Um, Our specialty formulas have a longer setting time than our staple formulas like pink blue and black um so again if you are using star pill and haven't found a formula that you liked um bend this knee for me um and you've tried pink blue and black and you felt like it just set too quick try one of our specialty formulas janiel is also an esthetician if you guys didn't know well you guys wouldn't know but janiel is an esthetician also I have a question. Can you hear me? Her hair is so fine, but it's definitely on there. What do you use to exfoliate with? Okay, Maystar. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. guys, um, we have a skincare line called Maystar, and we um, have the essentials line available. I'm going to do a clean up strip. Actually, put this leg down and out. Good enough. <laughs> Um, but we, if you're looking for products to retail, we have um, the body exfoliator, which I personally love. It is pumice based and Yehova oil based. We have the body emulsion, the facial exfoliator, the facial moisturizer, the boosters. Cream, the boosters. Um, the boosters are great. Um, if you are a Brazilian specialist as well, you can add those to your facial services. You can mix it with the mask. You can apply it before you put the mask on as well um your hair is so fine so now i'm just going to do some cleanup strips on her lots of pressure when you guys are applying if you notice that the hair isn't coming up um try readjusting your pressure when you are applying any questions no questions so far I'm going to hit your little ankles. I normally will do two legs at a time. Um, well, <laughs> want to be more than two, but both legs at a time. Um, but I'm a speed waxer and it's definitely taken time for me to adjust to only doing one leg at a time. But I'm learning for Carlos to make his life easier. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, Maria. Oh, okay. My question was about the temperature of the wax. Um, what kind of consistency does it need to be and how long does it take to heat up? I didn't hear. For this vegan formula specifically? Yes. I didn't hear. So for this vegan formula, mm -hmm. um, what would be like the temperature and the consistency that you're trying so to So the working temperature, if you have a star pill warmer. So from here on out, if I talk about a temperature, it's going to be based upon the star pill warmer um, guidelines. So the working temperature for vegan is between 50 and 55. Um, the consistency is a honey-like consistency. You don't want it running off of your stick, but you don't want it to be staying on your stick as well. So you want to have to always twirl. Are you gonna show a ball on the stick? Let's do it. So the right consistency is that there's too much, not enough wax for a strip for her leg right now, but you just wanna always twirl like that. Now, if it was running off the stick, that would be way too hot. And if I stopped twirling and it didn't move, then it would be too cool. 
question for you uh, from the chat. Veronica is asking if for Brazilian waxing, is the blue wax the correct wax to use? There's no right or wrong wax to use. Um, that's a good question, though. Blue is um, a super common formula to use. If you are a waxer that likes to lay only one, maybe two strips at a time, then blue would definitely be good for you. If you wax like me, and I like to lay three strips at a time, I'm doing Brazilians, um, I would recommend one of our specialty formulas. If you are a newbie waxer or trying to up your skills, I would practice with pink, blue, and black. That way you can get your technique down. And then you can up to a specialty formula just because that setting time is different. So it's not incorrect. There is a... Um, Depends on preference. Yeah, it's really just a preference. And there's actually a blue course on Star Plu, and I do full body and Brazilian demos. Send this name for me, you know, please. Has anyone here taken a Starpool University course? And let me know in the chat. Yes, I would love to hear that. So I normally wax from one side of the bed, um, unless the person I'm waxing is super tall or I'm tired. <laughs> um, that's just how I was trained at European Wax Center, and it kind of just stuck with me. Um, depending on the setup of the studio room that I'm waxing in, I will come down here to remove it depending on the service as well. Are there any dehydrated? What's your water intake like? <laughs> so that just sounds because, like not enough. Yeah, just because your client is hydrating their skin, if they are not drinking enough water. And you know this, Janelle. Are there any contraindications? I appreciate it. Any questions? Not at the moment. Okay. For everyone that's joining us, um, we are currently doing a leg wax with our vegan hard wax. And then we're going to be doing some underarms as well. Yes. And if you aren't a hard wax waxer, um, vegan also comes in a roll-on. Yes, it does. No, roll-on you can't use for every... I keep looking at you, talking to you, but you talked to Carlos. Yes. Sorry, guys. Um, if you like roll-on, you can use roll-on for legs, back, arms, chest, stomach, but not for your face, not for a Brazilian, not for underarms. That's pretty much it. But larger areas, bing, boom. Cuts back on so much time. All right, I'm going to do your kneecaps. Kneecaps can be very annoying sometimes to wax because they can be super dry um and honestly do you exfoliate your legs yeah, I just do that like once okay. maybe I, once I, a I, week if, if if i remember <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate your honesty but oh that was a good one but kneecaps can be stubborn they can be dry um so you're gonna have to <laughs> Sometimes do like a strip going down, a strip going up, and sometimes a strip going across, but it's all kind of just going to depend on the hair growth and how your clients take care of their skin. I know you try. I can tell. So for me, lower legs will always include kneecaps and so will upper legs. So a lower leg service for me is kneecap down. And then an upper leg service is kneecap up to like there. Lower legs are an easy upsell or an easier upsell for a Brazilian, especially in the summertime or if you live somewhere where it's always warm. Because um, you're going to see their legs and you'll be like, oh, do you want to add your lower legs too? And if you take a Star Pull You course, you'll learn the basics, Miss Trashcan, 
you learn the basics and you'll get that down and you will be able to build your skills up to speed wax where you'll be able to add on more services to your ticket. I'm going really slow. So if I look like I'm anxious on applying strips, it's just because I we have told her to go slow. European <laughs> wax center just ingrained in me and my brain just wants to lay a bunch of strips at once. Does anybody here work at European wax center or thinking about working at European or has worked God, there already? Getting warm. So if you notice that the wax is getting gummy like it is right now, it's probably because either you're hot, my hands are on fire. My hands always sweat though when I wax. Or your client is hot or it's warm in your room. Um, are you? Um, <laughs> Checks it, heart rate pulse on <laughs> Apple Watch. <laughs> um, the temperature of your studio or your room is always going to affect the performance of the wax as well. So if it's too warm, it'll be gummy and they'll stick like that. Or if it's too cold, it is going to crack. So I always suggest a working working temperature. Your studio temperature to be between 68, 67 to 69 degrees. Maria Anything? has definitely been in European Rock Center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she has. Yeah. <laughs> it, honestly, depending, it all depends on your franchise owner um do you definitely learn a lot i don't see how people can just physically stay there for like a decade good for y'all like i'm not knocking it you deserve an award but um you definitely learn a lot you learn how to work on your feet how to sell how to talk to people take clients and obviously your waxing skills um it's just not for everybody and that's okay uh bend this knee put that one flat has anybody worked at waxing in the city and the european wax center just curious just so like i, I don't know anyone that's worked at waxing in the city so i just like to hear the difference between the two do you know anyone that's worked at waxing in the city? Is there one? There's one down here, right? I have no clue, to be honest. I think there is. I think it's in like Doral. Other direction, but just as far. Okay. So I'm going to do some little cleanups on her ankles because she waxed her legs like three weeks ago. That was three weeks of growth. Yeah. <laughs> she's. This is what happens when you're consistent with waxing. Like this is how you show your clients the importance of being consistent and staying on schedule and using the right products. So normally if this is her three week growth, I would definitely push you out to like six weeks, but that's the goal um, is to just push your clients wax appointments. They might complain, but you are the waxer and the business owner. So you tell them what you need them to do. Um, if, because if they come earlier, they're not going to get the, the, cleanest wax that they could get because some of the hair isn't going to be on that same growth cycle so it's not going to come up but yeah. all right and do your little ankles any questions any contraindications yes so contraindications for her or just in general i'm assuming in general i think it's in general okay um first and foremost any acne medications especially oral if you are taking Accutane or anything like that, I always say six months to a solid year um, just because Accutane can super, super thin out your skin and you will lift your client's skin. Um, certain antibiotics, certain steroids, topical and oral, uh, post-op, depending on where the surgery is and how many weeks. If you are postpartum, I say 12 weeks post C-section, obviously with a note from your doctor. And then vaginal, I say at least 10 weeks too. But again, note from your doctor. I've had people come see me like four weeks after they just popped out a baby. <laughs> like, I need my wax. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You need a couple more weeks. But um, 
my client's health will always be more important than, you know, them being hairless. Um, so I'd rather them wait longer than come in too soon. Um, and, and, or until they're comfortable to come back in. Uh, what's another? Oh, blood thinners is a contraindication. Um, you can wax people when they're pregnant as long as they're comfortable and they're not like high risk or anything like that. Uh, about sun exposure. Sun exposure. Thank you. Sun exposure. No sunburn. Um, please don't come with sunburn. Any active herpes outbreaks, any open lesions, um, chemical peels, certain injectables, retinols, retinoids, laser be surprised how people cut because laser won't pick up blonde or gray or red hair i've had a few people like yeah i got lasered two days ago can you wax like everything else no baby <laughs> i can't i'm so sorry all right i'm gonna have you flip over for me if you have a client that can't completely flip over you can have them lay on their side and just have them kind of flip flop from side to side flat question oh wait is that you. uncomfortable for you okay up oh, lift up real quick thank you okay question question uh what are the essential steps in preparing the skin for waxing um if they're following a proper home care um the pre-wax gel which is this one a little bit of this goes a long long way and you can use this for facial services as well. Um, you can use the Maystar Meissler water as well for a cleanser for facial waxing and brow waxing. And then you would perform the wax with a quality wax product. And then you will follow that with post products like the lotion or emulsion and close it up with the oil. And you don't need a lot of either of these. Like a lot goes, a little bit goes on the long way. What she's saying goes for the next question for post waxing care tips. Um, I mean, here in the salon, you would do the oil and the lotion, but correct. I would do the lotion, then the oil, and then depending on the service, you can, you can always upsell a vajayshul. Um, I had different types of vajayshuls at my studio, so I had a mini, a regular one, and a deluxe one. Um, and then. It, Post wax products like to retail. Is that their question? Just post wax care tips for clients in general. Oh, for clients in general. Um, hydrator, no bar soap, quality body wash, and please moisturize moisturize your body every day. You know, people don't realize how important it is to moisturize yeah, until your you get body. Waxed. No, the same way you moisturize your face. Oh, absolutely. It's all skin. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. People what we as estheticians think is common sense, you quickly realize is not common sense. Question, uh, no powder? Uh, Correct. For, for star pill, we do not use um, any powder. Now, other brands, you can. Um, if you are having issues with someone who sweats, all you do is get a clean, dry cotton round, wipe the sweat off, dry the skin, and you would basically start the service over. So you would reprep the skin, remove any excess product, and then apply the wax. Why no powder? Um, it's just how Starpo was developed. Um, this is what happens when your client's skin is dry. The strip will crack. Janelle. Um, but it'll just affect the overall performance of the wax. That's all. A little strip correction, Janelle. It's fine. Actually, you are the perfect model. I like, I don't want to say I like when strips break, but I feel like a lot of people when they're teaching don't want to show strips breaking, but you should because it's going to happen. Regardless of how long you've been waxing for, what brand you use, a strip is going to crack. And it's important that you know that it's going to happen and how to troubleshoot it. I guess also to understand why it's breaking, like you correct because a lot of people would just go and blame the formula. Yeah, that too. But I know it's not the formula. Um, her skin is just dry. 
it doesn't make you a bad waxer if a strip breaks if a strip gets stuck it's life it is gonna happen you know chefs burn food overcooked food undercooked food so same are you laughing at me yes. my analogy <laughs> So if you look closely, her leg hair grows in a few different directions, <laughs> which is normal, actually, for the back of your legs. Um, and Mine like, looks like a swirl. Yeah, that's what, that's what she said. So. And a lot of the time you'll have upper, not upper leg hair, well, upper leg hair too. Upper leg hair will sometimes grow in or grow out. And then the back of the lower legs will swirl like how Arya says so hers is growing this way and then down right here and see how dry her skin is can, can you zoom in on that Carla? <laughs> you see how dry it's right there <laughs> so uh, if your client's skin is dry you know the wax might you know exfoliate but you got hydrate too they're saying that the wax could have also been uh, thin and that's why it cracked. Yeah. yeah, if it's too thin, it'll crack. Any other questions? Uh, yes. What do you recommend asking during a client consultation before um, a waxing session? Ooh, I love that question. Always ask their... Um medical history what meds they're on so you can determine what contraindications might be there um and their current skincare regimen if they have one and if they've been waxed before and obviously allergies i feel like consultations are skipped over a lot for waxing services and they're just as important absolutely Um, how do you handle clients who may be nervous or, you know, about getting waxed? Um, talk them through everything and explain every single step to them. Um, make them feel comfortable. Be, they be personable. Um, but definitely just explain what you're doing. And then if they start freaking out, just keep them calm. And if you feel like you need to end the service, that's completely fine. Just don't guilt them or make them feel bad for being nervous but just talking to them talk to them throughout the service and like I said educate them on what you're doing and why you're doing it and then that way you can also do another mini consultation to figure out um how they take care of their skin at home what happens if a client decides you know like mid-service or like after you started that you know they don't want to go through with it and you just end the service um well, I figure, but I mean, how, how do you no, handle some, it? Some people won't end the service. They'll just force you to sit there. And uh -huh. take so it. for me, um, I would normally just charge 50% depending on how far along in the service I got. Now, if I did like 85% of your Brazilian baby, you're paying me for probably a bikini full. Um, if I only did like two or three strips, Depending on my mood, I might just let you go free and then we could just rebook the next service. Um, but I've, it can be annoying. I've seen a, a few stories about STs, you know, who get a client and they'll book a bikini wax. Mm -hmm. And then when they're on the table, they're like, no, I want you to take off more, mm -hmm. which becomes a Brazilian, of course. Mm -hmm. But then they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay for oh, a Brazilian. I because personally. they're like, we booked for a bikini wax. I don't care what you book. <laughs> what you received is a brazilian so that right there again is when you educate your client and make sure that you guys are on the same page um because yeah they might assume that i don't know why the bikini line and the full brazilian would be the same price but make it clear like this is a different price point because it's a completely different service. I have never experienced that. Never? Maybe maybe a European, but that's why we have the GSAs. So that's not something that I would have handled. I've had people try to say that I didn't do a certain service because that European, oh, my mic fell, Carlos. Like, what is, is that? Yes. Oh. 
um like you european is big on upsells and adding services to your ticket like most places um but people will try to take advantage and be like oh she didn't do that in the room when you know that we did yeah. you know Any other questions? Yes. How often should tools and equipment be cleaned, like cleaned and sanitized? After every single client. So that's why I always had like five pairs of scissors, five pairs of um, tweezers, scissors, whatever I needed. Um, that way I just threw it in the barbicide and I always had a pair ready to go. Uh, your wax uh, this is a common question too of like cleaning your wax warmer how often you should do it yeah because i mean there's obviously tools like if you're using sticks you know those are getting yeah, those out. are disposables yeah disposables, um, but like tweezers tweezers scissors, tweezers, um your bed your bed clean please in between each client please <laughs> <laughs> with a like with a cabbie wipe a medical grade wipe something like that not just like a baby wipe um between each client um what else obviously this but as for your warmer for your warmer once a week like just let it go all the way down and then dump that little bit of wax out and then just do a deep clean and you'll be good to go you should obviously be cleaning the, the outside, outside of your warmer between clients like it should never be gunky and gross people are gonna judge you is there that. anything specific you recommend cleaning your warmer with um i use excuse me um goo gone a little bit of the oil and just rubbing alcohol for both the outside and the inside yeah mm -hmm. and just make sure when you clean the inside to so that you're removing all the excess cleaning product as well with a clean dry paper towel microfiber cloth um just so it doesn't get in the wax questions for you um what can you recommend to reduce the pain of waxing advil 30 minutes before the appointment lots of water yeah lots of water um tylenol 35 ish minutes before um hydrate your skin home care and exfoliate don't exfoliate 24 hours before it's more like 36 um how do you feel about numbing creams i hate numbing creams. <laughs> i know that <laughs> just because I need you to be able to, to feel. Yes. Like, I don't think you should use numbing cream for like tattoos, piercings, surgery, obviously. Um, I think, but yeah, waxing, but you need your client to feel. It. Yeah. I need you to feel not the pain. <laughs> yeah. But I need you to tell me if something is wrong. Like, I can't feel what your skin feels from your angle. You know what I mean? So something yeah. might feel super, super hot, but your skin might not be showing that to me yet. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> I'm glad I'm just Janelle is just a key 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 in over here. <laughs> um, are there any specific products or ingredients that you advise against? I, I mean, advise I guess, against? Yeah, like um, I guess specific. Carlos is trying to get your attention. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see for specific products. Like I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe like skincare. Um, um, I don't like Dove. I don't like Dove. I know that's like, yeah, but yes, it's number one dermatologist, whatever. But that doesn't really mean anything. Um. If they can just pay a dermatologist to be on their board and say that it's a quality product. But Dove is going to hydrate, not hydrate, it's going to dehydrate your skin, throw off your skin's pH balance, and it's just not going to... Are there any specific them. ingredients within products that you, you know, people should uh, look out for? It's a, so, yes and no. It really depends more on where that ingredient is listed in the ingredient list. It's like at the like the last ingredient, there's just like trace amounts in it. But I'm not gonna use like rubbing alcohol 
with the top ingredient exactly for a prep for a wax for a chemical peel sure um but for a wax like stuff anything that's going to throw off your skin's ph you don't want to do that too much glycerin depending on your client's skin question um can you use this vegan formula for facial waxing absolutely i did ari's brows with vegan look how good they look like two, <laughs> two weeks ago a week ago i don't know daylight savings is like throwing me off daylight <laughs> savings was an hour change <laughs> not days <laughs> Okay, question. Is there a particular type of wax that is best for certain areas of the body? Um, not really. It really just depends on preference. Um, Calendula, one of our specialty formulas, is great for acneic skin. So if you have a client that has back knee or, you know, breakouts on their face, Calendula is a great option for that. But no, there's no, like, right or wrong formula to use for a, a specific area. Um, let's see. What strategies do you suggest for building and maintaining a loyal client base in the waxing industry? Be professional, communicate, <laughs> educate, and just be consistent. Um, word of mouth is really what built my business obviously european wax center too but when i went solo um a majority of my clients after that were all referrals um yeah maintain the only way you maintain clientele is providing an experience um like i love seeing my clients like it's just gossip time and a good time um, but just, you have to make them feel, God, I keep missing the trash can. You have to make them feel comfortable and give them a reason to come back. Like you are the expert. So they want to feel like they're coming to someone who's knowledgeable and what they're doing without being like condescending in a way, you know, like I'll, I, with my personality, I'll be like, please don't be stupid. <laughs> but they know that I say that out of love, you know, like it's not, it's how it's your delivery, but it's also my personality. So I also feel like you're going to have clients that get on your nerves, but you're also, I'm big on energy. So I feel like your clients are going to be a reflection of you. I get that. Yeah. Uh, I just want to check in with everybody. Can you guys hear either me or taylor okay is the volume okay for everyone i don't know is there sound problems just wanted to double check okay okay it seems like they can hear us well okay good i was about to be sad <laughs> do any of you guys have your own studio or want to go solo? Did I answer her question, by the way? Um, I believe so. Okay. If you have any follow-up questions in regards to, like, your previous question, just put it in the chat. Yeah, please. Uh, what are some common mistakes that new waxing professionals make, and how can they be avoided? Not using enough pressure when applying because you're afraid that you're going to injure your client especially for Brazilians, you want to use more pressure than what you think you need for a Brazilian service. Um, not giving yourself grace. Like you're not going to be an expert waxer right away. Wax is going to break on you. You're going to take an hour to do a Brazilian. You're going to take an hour and a half to do a full leg. There is nothing wrong with that. We all experience it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Um, another is um what is something you wish you knew like if you could change something about the way you did things like starting because you've been in the industry for a while now no um so i wish that i had been more patient with myself and my skill set 
Um, but I am grateful for my team and my family and like my aesthetic teacher and everything. Um, but what's another thing that I wish? Um, one thing that I'm glad I didn't do was go solo right out of school. Um, I know a lot of people want to do that because they feel like if they don't, they're not successful in this industry. And that's not true at all. I think it's important for you to find your bearings and get confident in your skills and learn how to run a business the way you like it and the way you don't like it. Um, I have been licensed for like two and a half years before I opened my studio part-time and then COVID happened and I was like by European Black Center and I went um, full-time by myself. But you, there's nothing wrong with working for somebody for a couple of years just so you can learn. Like everything's a stepping stone and I'm grateful that um, my mom taught me to look at everything that way. Everything's a stepping stone. So use it as a learning experience and take what you liked and what you didn't like and use that, you know, to help you accomplish your long-term goal. That was wrong with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Laura is telling us that she's painting her studio now. Oh, oh what color? Congratulations. <laughs> they should paint it for her. At least a free wall. Good for her, though. Any other questions? Uh, how do you ensure compliance with health and safety standards? Um, following Well, luckily for me, I actually learned a lot in school. Um, I know everyone's experience in a set of school isn't always the same or always the best. But over sanitize, over clean, and you will be just fine. Um, if you feel like, if you feel torn between a decision, like, is this okay or is this not okay? It's probably not okay. And just do above and beyond. Um, but as long as you are just sanitizing everything, not reusing things that are not supposed to be reused, you'll be fine. And storing things the yeah, way they should be storing things, stored. correct. Everything, and that depends on your state board too. That's not universal. Um, like in Maryland, things like the sticks have to be covered like at the end of your shift, but some states don't have that, but it depends on your state board. So just follow your state board regulations. Everything is listed out. If you have questions, just give them a call. It's going to be a pain probably. But if you ever have any questions on what the guidelines are for your states, just go to the state board website. But always keep basic stuff like keep yeah. your warmer lid on. Barbicide, always, 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 always have yeah. barbicide. You change it between each shift at the end of each day. Um, it'll also eat your tools if you leave it in for too long. Um, always wipe down your countertops, your bed, change your bed paper. If you have the marine vinyl, that's cool too. Um, like the marine vinyl mat, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can just wipe those down as well. I know some people have the marine vinyl mat and like a bed paper on top. That's cool too. Are you okay? You just hit me um always clean your floors always have rubbing alcohol on hands natasha says they use cs20 in canada oh see canada y'all have different regulations up there but i like that <laughs> the licensing is is even different up there yes for everyone um the cs20 is a medical grade disinfectant uh, yeah. that they use in hospitals yeah, so like sometimes the country is going to determine what um, like sanitation stuff is available or not available. But I'd rather you guys use something like hospital grade than not. For everyone here, we currently have... 50% oh, off you are. um our specialty collections so that's going to include all special specialty formulas which is our vegan our coral calendula and star soft the four specialties I'm and this discount is going to include uh the pre and post for each as well 
I'm done with her lower legs. And normally there's not Demi this long, but I'm talking with you guys. So I'm going to use um, my post wax products, which is the lotion for our emulsion first. A vitamin E. Um, and this actually has, no, the oil has the cassia in it. So hydrating, healing, all of that, because like I said, Janelle is a little dry. My tagline at my business was don't be dusty. So I definitely would have called you dusty <laughs> at my studio. <laughs> but I miss my clients, but they wouldn't leave dusty though. They would leave fantastic, you know? But your clients definitely are going to come to you as like a safe space. And I was honored that my clients felt that way with me. Um, you know, clients will trauma dump on you in a heartbeat. So you end up turning into, you know, their therapist, even if it's just for like 15 minutes, because I, again, came from European Wax Center. So that was just the timing that I was used to. And you would be surprised by how much people will tell you in 15 minutes or not, because you guys are estheticians too. <laughs> A question for you. Do you recommend any specific resources for continuing education for waxing professionals? Uh, Starbill University, of course. <laughs> um, I have, I really put a lot of love and energy into the courses. Um, the stuff that I wish that I knew at least technique wise that I wish that I knew um, when I first started waxing. And then you will get product knowledge of Starpill as well. Um, always make sure that you have liability insurance. Um, Associated skincare professionals is a good one. And they have free resources that comes with your, I guess, payout, your insurance payment. But Starpill, you always, you can get those courses at starpilluniversity.com and there are free PDF downloads as well yes here what you see on the screen so if you go on starpleuniversity.com and Probably. select either the specialty formulas mm -hmm. course or the brazilian waxing course when you go to checkout you would put the code that you see here on the screen money fb and you'll get 25 percent off um either one of the courses yeah, you can get it. this is available for the first 10 sts that claim this offer so make sure that you get it while you can Any other questions? Uh, no questions. My hands are super sweaty. Moment. So I I keep powder in here because my hands just sweat. That's all. Don't judge me. <laughs> Janiel ruined Carlos's shot, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, question for you. What other hard waxes do we have? We have several. So we have Calendula, which is our um, antiseptic formula. Um, Calendula of extract, obviously, is the main ingredient there. We have Starsoft, which is our clear hypoallergenic formula. Um, we have a lot of content with that. And this comes in a soft wax can and a roll-on. And we have 30 pound boxes of Calendula and 30 pound boxes of the Star Soft as well. Vegan, which is what I'm using, like I said earlier, comes in roll on 2.2 pound bags, 30 pound boxes. Coral comes in a roll on and a 2.2 pound bag and a 30 pound bag. This um, wax I used to use in my studio as well is brightening because of the coral powder that's in it. And then, of course, we have our stable formulas pink, blue, and black. I left you guys some information in the chat um, for each of our specialty formulas. So for Calendula, Starsoft, Vegan and Coral, there's a little information in there. And then each one's going to have a link so that you can check those out. Um, and these are the four collections that you can get 50% off when using the Money FB code. Oh, we also have a jelly mask. Yes, we do. Too. I don't know why I always so keep good. forgetting to bring that up. It is really good. 
and it sets super quickly. I'm about to do her Janelle's underarms, by the way, guys. You just, it's up to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with. You can pop your shirt off. Learning lesson for you guys. If you have a client, like a first time client who hasn't gotten their underarms done before, I normally just have them like pop their shirt off around their neck and then have their shirt hang on like a scarf to cover your boobs. Um, <laughs> but you'll get to the point where your client is like literally like telling you about their life and they're half naked. Um, but again, this is my first time waxing Janelle and there's other people in here and she's on live. So we are going to get a sheet for her. Um, but underarms are super easy. Yeah, just leave it. It's up whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, it's, it's just and then sorry guys and then just like that and then so like that that's normally how <laughs> wait there you go improvising so same products oh i'm sorry can you close, can you close the door Thank you. Over to you. There we go. Um, some clients will prefer, or not clients, I'm sorry, waxers will have like drapes and stuff. I personally didn't do that. Um, my clients weren't used to stuff like that. Again, because I'm coming from European Wax Center, so it's like in and out. Um uh, it's just also a little time consuming. <laughs> But if that's your, if that's, you know, what you want to do, go for it. Or if you feel like that's what your clientele is looking for from you, do what you feel like is best for you. Question. Are there any instances where you might modify your approach for specific clients? Always. Every single time. Nothing is ever going to be, very few things are going to be the same. Like the basics, you're always going to cleanse and prep the skin um, remove excess products, but everyone's anatomy is different. Everyone's pain tolerance is different. Um, especially for Brazilians, not everyone can sit butterfly, not everyone can put their knees to their chest, but, um, it's definitely, it's going to vary per client. Everyone's hair growth is different. You know, that's a good question. Um, how would you go about like, if they can't butterfly i do you mind <laughs> thank you okay so butterfly bottom of your feet together perfect okay so if they can't do this i will have them do this and just do one at a time oh you got, i was gonna say you guys can't even see that so sorry good yeah so but yeah butterfly again thank you so this is a butterfly i normally start from up here and then work my way down but i'm always gonna stay on the right side of her body because i'm right-handed now if they can sit like this or if someone is heavy set i will have them either do this and then do what i can this way and then have them switch or i will have them do that <laughs> Or just do like one leg at a time, but we you figure it out as you go. Yeah. But that's just that's you're gonna come across that. Um, again, that's troubleshooting and just getting comfortable with yourself and your skills and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Um, when I have that issue, I definitely adjust, not issue, but you know, circumstance. Um, I won't lay as many strips at a time and you end up not Oh, hey, um, you, <laughs> you end up, um, not going over the time because you're doing less corrective strips. So an example with a sweater, lay one strip at a time. If you notice that they are overheating, because if you go into that service, laying two or three strips at a time, they're just going to overheat and the wax is not going to apply or remove properly. So you're going to end up spending more time correcting those strips than you are actually applying quality strips. Okay. Underarms. So go like this. 
are you a sw- you are not hairy so you're gonna have lots of clients like this that think they're hairy was wrong good it is not so there's hair nope nope mm-mm. nope can you guys see perfect so I am going to use the gel. I'm going to use the gel. It's important to remove all the deodorant and stuff. Sorry if you guys heard that. We are at the office and there's other people here besides us today. And I'm going to take a clean, dry cotton round and remove any excess products. And she says she's a sweater and it's a little warm in here. Any questions, Ari? Nothing okay. for the moment. So for underarms, um, you can do them two different ways. You can do one long strip like this in one direction and then a strip in the other direction. Or you can do it following, like you can split it in half and go down and then up. So is my arm on the way? Did yes. I, sorry. <laughs> um, like that. Did you ask if anyone uses Starpo already? Sorry. Did you Did you ask if anyone uses Starpo wax already? Did, I... did not. With vegan, because it's like sheer, I feel like you can't really. See the no yes you can you can yeah okay. absolutely it's just my angle then it is not that much hair but it was a nice strip anyone here that's with us um what formulas are you using at the moment are you oh guys yeah like more any like, brand yeah any brand that you're using do you prefer like creamy gel consistencies any soft wax girlies there wax, wax out there in here That is not a good angle, you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> is that better? You want to come on this side? We're trying to make the magic happen for you guys. So for heavy set clients, I normally don't get them to hold. If they're more comfortable with that, then obviously you can. But boom. Neil, you are a sweater. That's okay. Normally, like I said earlier, I would be doing both um, underarms at the same time. So you see how that little bit rolled right there? That's just because she is starting to sweat for real this time. So for sweaters, like I said, I don't lay multiple strips at a time I definitely wouldn't do it for her so I bet if I go back and look at the other underarm I'm gonna have to dry her off again that's, that's okay that's okay no don't apologize there's not you you're supposed to sweat it is just fine and it's warm in here and you're getting waxed so it's okay questions for you um are there any specific marketing techniques or platforms that you recommend? Um, what's popular? TikTok. <laughs> it's TikTok, <laughs> Instagram. Um, yeah, that's an Ari so question. You guys couldn't hear me. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm the community manager here at Starpill. So I'm going to focus on all the community, social media, and I'm going to recommend to all of you guys that you put your business out there. Um, go on social media as much as you can, promote your services, speak to your clients, um, 
And if your clients are willing to let you create content um, with their services, you know, their faces don't have to be involved, but you can get before and afters, you can get applications. Um, that way, consent forms. yeah, for consent forms yeah. for everyone. Um, but that way you're able to promote your business, promote your services, get more clients, also be able to have, I guess you could have social proof um, for people to have a better word of mouth of your business. Um, so definitely social media. Do you want to see the strip? <laughs> I've had clients that wanted to keep the strips. What Especially for? like Brazilian strips. Because people Oh my God. If people I've had a like I've I get them looking at it. No, I've had clients like sell them. I've had clients um like their boyfriends wanted them. Hey, I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> right. Make For them. formulas that people are using. So Oh yes. Let's see. There's Tell a couple. Me. So a creamy one from Waxness. Uh, okay. there's also satin smooth blue. Okay. The, titanium. The, the hard, I'm assuming. I'm guessing. And the green one. I've I've used the blue, but I haven't used the green one, I don't think. It's a hard wax. I've you oh maybe I have. I got a satin smooth kit when I was in school a million years ago. And I feel like one of the waxes I had was green, but I can't remember if it was soft or hard. Question for you. Are there any trends or innovations in the waxing industry that professionals should be aware of? Ooh. Um rosin free formulas is one um I oh shoot I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> rosin free formulas is one um I feel like your diet and like eating healthy is coming more into play now too um and educating your clients on why they should not wax themselves at home like that's always going to be a thing but I feel like now with TikTok and influencers please 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 Ugh, you're not licensed don't wax yourself at home. Just don't do it. I wax myself at home. Yeah, but like, <laughs> oh. And then um, Taylor will tell me something about it. Yes, exactly. And then what happens? She comes in is like, yeah, I try to wax myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can wax my legs myself. It'll go great. But my underarms, I just. Ah, she's sweaty and I will break here. So I'll just let Taylor do it. Exactly. Uh, here's a formula: citrus mojito for hard wax. For who? Citrus mojito. What's the brand? I don't know. That sounds kind of yummy. That sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you ever have like cotton round residue, um, just get some cleanser and remove it. Is anybody still in school? Sorry, the angle. And this is not a Taylor likes like, to get in the way. I know. And I'm <laughs> every time I'm trying to not get in the way, I get in the way even more. And then I'm like doing some weird thing with my hands. Oh, body mechanics is something that I want to talk about. Body mechanics, if you do not properly, if you're not paying attention to your body, in the way you're standing, you are going to kill yourself and you're going to be in pain after every shift. So if you find yourself like hunching over or like doing some weird stuff with your wrists or your neck, um, just pay attention to it. Cause you're, like I said, you're going to fall apart. Um, especially since we are on our feet most of the day. Um, what I always recommend is Bracing your knees, not locking your knees like straight. You guys can't see my knees, but <laughs> don't lock your knees. Um, and always move basically like pivot from your waist. So instead of like doing like this, you're gonna place your feet and do it more like that. If that doesn't make sense, please. All right. I'm sitting in front of her and I did I, that was confusing. So <laughs> so you're always going to try to work from one side of the body, okay? But 
work in a way that isn't going against yourself. Does that make sense so far, Ari? Yes. Okay. So instead of like doing like this with her underarm, I'm coming back here and moving from my pelvic bone and working this way. So instead of going like this, I'm coming here and bracing my knees and doing it that way. Thank you, Taylor. Of course. Uh, the citrus mojito is another sad and smooth. Ah, okay. It's a hard whack. Thank you. <laughs> so Natasha, who is here with us, she's been an esthetician for more than 20 years, uh, says that she loves it. And there's always something to learn. Always. There's always something to learn. Um, something that you might've learned years ago and just forgot. Um, there's always ways to improve your technique, improve your skill with this industry. It's always learning, continuous learning. Um, even if you think you know everything, you probably don't. And if you do, then you are not in the right room. Um, whether it's business related, marketing related technique, products, ingredients, trends, anything, there's always something to learn. I don't want to put any more wax on her skin. So sorry, Janelle. I'm just tweezing these little ones. If you have a client that doesn't want to be tweezed, that's fine too. Are you, do you exploit your underarms? I can tell. <laughs> yes, you should. Well, no. No, you need to exfoliate your underarms because these just slid right out but you need to exfoliate your nerves. Anywhere you get wax, you need to exfoliate. Question. Um, can you yeah. explain the stages of hair growth and how they impact the waxing process? Of course they can. So are you learning something today too for me? <laughs> <laughs> so there are three hair growth phases. Um, you tell me. I know. I'm mixing it up with meiosis, as <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. But um, there's the growth phase where the hair follicle is coming up. And then obviously there's when it's above the skin. And then the other one is when you remove it and it sheds. Okay. So if you wax someone and they are in that middle phase and it's still trying to grow, that hair nine times out of ten is not going to come up. So you want to get everything through that shedding phase. So that way you damage the hair follicle and it slows down the hair growth. Um, would you say obviously that hair growth grows differently in different parts of the body? Correct. Correct. Natasha says the aesthetics industry is always evolving with new products, new techniques, et cetera. That is very true. Yes absolutely like stuff that was popular like 20 years ago is not depending on what it is you know like ingredients come and go I feel like mandelic acid is becoming really popular right now that's one of my favorite ingredients but I definitely feel like it's becoming part of the wave right now what do you think is a trend Janelle you're not done I gotta put post-care products on you I don't know what the trend I feel like Devices are like a trend. Now. Oh, devices are a trend for sure. So I'm going to put post wax stuff on her. So this is the emulsion. And this will be the oil. Question for you. How do you educate clients about proper pre and post waxing care? Ooh, that's a good one. Keep it simple. Um, you can put your arms down. Keep it simple um, because you can use big words that, again, might be common for us, but it's not going to be common for them. Oh, hello. We're on camera. <laughs> um, so just keep it simple. Can they, can you guys hear that? I'm so sorry. all right um keep it simple and highlight like one key ingredient in each pre and post wax care product 
if you overwhelm them, it's not going to retain and they're not going to understand it and they're not going to see the benefits of using it. So like for the Maystar body scrub, I always highlight the pumice stone in it. So it's a gentle exfoliator, physical exfoliator. And then for the boosters and the emulsion, again, same thing. I highlight one ingredient and educate them on the benefits of that particular ingredient and how it's going to change their skin and their wax results. Any other questions? I am asking the chat to see if anyone has any final questions before we go. If you do have any questions that come up later, either about the live, about products, about business, about the courses, anything that you can think of, um, you can find us on Star, um, Instagram, Starple Wax USA. And I will be there personally to take in all your questions, to write back to you. Uh, and if anything needs to go to Taylor directly, I will. She says it all um, to me. <laughs> I put it here on the chat. Starple Wax USA on Instagram or on TikTok. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for everyone that joined Thanks, us today. It was all your fun. Questions. Thank you, Maria, for making this happen. And then we will also be in the group. So yes. you can also reach Add out to us in the group there. For sure. So. I think we're good. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, you can screenshot this um over here. Oh, yeah. The, money the Facebook. Codes. Yeah. The money FB code, and you'll get 50% off any of the specialty products or 25% off the Starple University course. This is also going to be on our YouTube. Thank you guys, we'll see um, you another time. Bye, guys. Can you hear me? Bye. I don't know. I think his Zoom must be. I don't know.